Hello, this is William from Visual Components, and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up interactive joints for components. Now before we get started, I quickly want to go over what an interactive joint is. A joint is a part of a component that you can either move or rotate in the 3D world. So when they're interactive, that means you can do it without having to run a simulation. For example, I'll go to the Interact command here, and when I hover over a part of this component, when the pointer changes to a hand icon, that indicates that this part is interactive. And there are a couple things to notice here. First, when I hold on the left mouse button, notice I'm opening and closing the doors. And they're moving in a degree of freedom, in this case an axis, which is the x-axis. And the joint type is also either going to be linear or rotary, so the joints are actually moving in a linear motion or translating along that x-axis. This other part of the component over here, the panel, is also interactive, but this is a rotary type joint, and its degrees of freedom is around the z-axis, and for any type of rotary joint, there's also a pivot point. So it's actually rotating around a point probably over here in the handle. So there are two types of joints, linear and rotary, and they each have different types of degrees of freedom depending on how you set them up. Another thing to notice is that a joint has constraints or limits to how far you can move them. So notice when I move the panel, I'm not you know flying it off into space. And when I move the doors closer to one another, they don't crash and just fall off the machine. Another thing to notice is that when you interact with a part of a component, the entire component is not moving. So just the geometry for the doors is moving and the geometry for the panel is moving, not the whole component. And the reason for that is that the geometry is contained in separate nodes. Now to get started, we first need to find the geometry that we need to work with in this video. So I'm not going to use this component. I'll click New to clear the 3D world. Goodbye. <laughs> and we'll go to the ECAT tab. I'll be working with the Webby Catalog 2014 collection, and I already did a search for Process Machine. Now, once you've done this, scroll all the way down and find this component here, Process Machine Work Table. This is the component I'm going to use in this video. So I'll right-click the item and then click Open. Now it's added to the 3D World Origin, and if I want to practice modeling this component, I can export its geometry to a geometry file. So I'll go to the File menu, I'll point to Export, and then click Layout Geometry. I can now save the geometry file. In this case, I'll save it in my Visual Components Documents, 2014, My Models, and I'll rename the file Example, and then click Save. I'll now clear the 3D world. I don't need to use this component anymore, but you can keep it if you want to reference it later. So I'll click New, and then I'll go to File, and I'm going to import the geometry I just created. So File, Import, there's the example file, and I'll click Open. So I've now imported this geometry. So if I go to the Create tab, notice here's the component root node. It has a frame and a container for the geometry. We can now begin setting up interactive joints in this component. So I'll click Fill. And notice there are some parts of the component that we can maybe make interactive. For example, there's a panel over here. There's doors that we can probably open and close and there's a handle here. So all in all I think we'll have three joints, so I'll make three nodes. I'll go to the component node tree. I'll right click the root node and click new link. This creates a new node and here are its properties, its name, its offset, its joint, and its pivot. So the offset is the position of a node which by default is inherited from its parent, so right now it's actually at the component's root node or its origin. Go and rename the link to be handle. The joint is the joint that's going to be used for the node, and the pivot is that point of rotation if in case this joint is a rotary type. So go and close this out. And now instead of creating a node offset, I'll just keep it at the node origin for now. And I now need to get the geometry I want to work with. So in this case I'm going to use the handle. I'll go back to the component root node, and I'll select that original geometry container. I'll use the geometry sets filter, and I'm going to create a selection window to select that handle's geometry. Now not all the geometry was selected, so I'm going to hold down the control key and the shift key and click this geometry here. It's red, so I added it to the selection, and I can now right-click anywhere in the 3D world, point to geometry sets, and now click this command here, move sets to feature. So it's moving that geometry into a new geometry container, which you can see right here. Now to double check we have all the right geometry selected, I'm going to make it invisible for now, so I'll double click the feature here. And for the Show Content property, I'll turn it off because that controls the visibility. And in the 3D world, we don't see any you know, geometry floating around, so it seems we've got everything we need. So I'll turn the Show Content back on and click Close. 
I can now move this geometry to its node. So I'll go ahead and drag it into handle up here. And now I can start setting up the joint. So to do that, I'm going to use a control parameter. So I'll go to the parameter tab here. I'll create a real parameter. And I'm going to name the joint handle joint. And we don't need to rebuild the geometry when the value changes, but we do need to update the simulation. And I'm going to give this joint a constraint. So I'm going to use a range, a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 180. Click Close. And I can now assign this parameter to this node's joint property. So I'll double left click handle here in the component node tree. And for its joint property, I now need to define do I want this to translate or rotate. So I want it to move along the x-axis, but I actually want it to rotate. So we'll do a capital R for rotate, lowercase x for the axis. And we we'll use parentheses, and I'll type in that parameter I created of handle joint. I'll hit the enter key. And as long as it's blue and not red, there's no errors, so we're good. I'll close this out. And now to interact with the joint, I need to create a jog behavior for the node. So go to the behavior tab here. And in this menu here, I'll click jog info. Notice here are all its properties. So degrees of freedom, we're actually rotating around the z-axis. I'm sorry, the x-axis. We can leave scale alone for now, but the variable that controls the interaction is going to be that handle joint parameter I created. So everything's set up. So now if we test, I'll click the interact command here and rotate the handle. Uh-oh, what happened here? It seems we have the wrong pivot point or point of rotation for the handle, because right now the pivot point is the component's uh, you know, root node, its origin. So to fix that, there is an easy way. We can simply translate the pivot point for the node that's containing the handle's geometry. So I'll select a node here in the component node tree. I'll click the links filter. I'll now right click anywhere in the 3D world point to links. And notice here are some options for translating and rotating a pivot point and translating and rotating an offset. So I'll translate a pivot point first and I'll use the snap command here. And for the filter I'll just use the snap on face centers which is right here. And I'll click this bottom part here and there's my new pivot point. And now there is not really any visual indication of where the pivot point is. So if you want to know what the pivot point is defined, you have to go to the node's properties. So I'll double left click the handle node here. Notice here is that expression I just created. Now any value that has a zero, you can go ahead and clean up. So I'm actually going to get rid of those rotations there. And for the Y, we can go and get rid of that too, because it's zero. All right, I'll hit enter. It's blue, so it's good close this out and let's test again. So the interact command and now I'm rotating that handle. Alright. Now it can be a little bit difficult because we didn't actually use any node offset and the preferred way is to actually to create a node offset for the node that you want to make interactive. So I'm going to actually show you how to do that now. So the other part of the machine is that panel which I have my eye on. Hello. So let's go and create a node for this panel here. So I don't want to make it a child node for handle, so I'm going to click the root node, right click, and then click new link. I'll rename the node panel. And before we add the geometry to the node, I want to create the offset, because if you move geometry into a node that has an offset, it might move the geometry uh, in a way you might not want. So I'll click the links filter here. I'll right click in the 3D world, point to links, and then click translate offset. So once again, I'll use that snap command, and we'll use the face center. And there's actually a hinge over here, so I'll use that. So I'll click there. Looks good. I'll access the node's properties. And there is the expression. So we can clean this up just a bit, so I'll get rid of the rotations. And I'll keep the X, the Y, and the Z as is. So I'll hit the enter key. It's blue. It's good. Great. Now, if you want a more visual representation of where that node is, what you can do is go to the component node tree, right click, and then click visualize node tree. So you can see here now, instead of that pivot point that's kind of just, you know, hovering over here, we actually have a clear line that indicates where this offset is and what the point of rotation is for this panel. So now I can go ahead and move the panel geometry here. I'll go to the components root node, go back to the geometry tab and I'll select that original geometry container. Go to the geometry sets filter and let's get a better view of the panel. 
and I'll create a selection window. And it seems I got everything, but I um, actually missed out that hinge, so I'll hold down the Control and Shift key, and left click layer to add it to the selection. I'll now right click, point to geometry sets, and move the geometry into a new container, which you can see here. Now I don't want the geometry to reposition itself based on this node offset, so I'm going to hold down the Shift key and drag the container into the new node, like so. So you notice it might have popped over here, but it retained its position in the 3D world. Great. Let's now go and set up the control parameter for the joint. So go to the Parameter tab, click the real parameter, and let's rename it Panel Joint don't want to rebuild the geometry but we do want to update the simulation. I'll create a range of 0 to 90 so a minimum of 0, max of 90. I'll now go to the panels nodes property and for its joint property I'll actually want to rotate this so capital R and let's rotate it around the Z axis so capital R lowercase z parentheses and we'll use that control parameter that we have here panel joint I'll hit the enter key, it's blue, it's good, close this out, and now we need to create that jog behavior, so we'll go to the behavior tab, create the jog info, for degrees of freedom, where yes, we're rotating around the Z, scale can be one right now, and the variable is that panel joint. Great, let's close this out and test, so I'll click the interact command, yep, that icon or the pointer changes to a hand icon, so notice I'm now rotating the panel, but it's actually colliding with the machine. So we actually need to reverse the angle that we're rotating. And that's very simple to correct. I'll go back to the notes properties. So double left click panel. And for the rotate Z around the panel joint, I'll make this a negative. So now when I rotate the panel, it's rotating in the opposite direction. But I have to pull the cursor to the right to rotate the panel. So what I can do is invert or change the scale of the interaction. To do that, I'll go to that jog behavior for the panel, double left click to access its properties, and for the scale, instead of positive one, I'll change this to negative one. And it's similar to video games where you have inverted controls. You press down, but you're actually going up. So I'll hit the enter key here, close this out. So now when I interact with the panel again, I move the cursor to the left, the panel also moves to the left. I'm now going to create joints using a servo controller and make them interactive and move during a simulation. So the doors right now in the machine, I can make them interactive, but I don't need to create any node offset because I'm just going to translate them along the x-axis and they can stay at their current position. So in the component node tree, I'll right click the root node and select new link. I'll now rename this doors and click close. And now in the behavior tab here, I can create a new servo controller. I'll click the joints button. And then in this window, I'll click the new joint and for the joint type I'm going to make this linear and I'll rename the joint to be door joint. Notice I can now give the minimum maximum value for the joints so I'm going to make a minimum of 0 and let's say a maximum of 350. So I'll go ahead and click close and notice it's very important that you have the root node as the components root node and the flange node, the node that will move, is going to be the doors. So this is going to contain the geometry for the doors here. So I'll close this out and now I can go ahead and move the geometry into this node. So I'll go back to the components root node, geometry tab, and go to that original geometry container. And I want to quickly select everything. So I'll use the geometry sets filter. I'll click the top of this panel here. And in the 3D world, I'm going to right click, point to geometry sets, and I'm going to click this command here called select all geometry sets with the same material. So this quickly selects a lot. This doesn't work in all cases, so be careful with that command but now I can right click, point to geometry sets, and move them into a new feature. So now I do actually want those side rails, or this black rails here. So I'll go to the geometry sets filter, and I'm going to do the same thing I just did again. So notice I'm clicking these sides here. So I clicked one, and I'll select all the other sides with the same material. So geometry sets, select all geometry sets with the same material. And it looks like I have everything selected. Now instead of moving these into a new container, I'm going to cut them from this geometry container. So I'll right click, geometry sets, and then click cut. So notice they disappear. So in the node feature tree over here, I'm going to right click geometry underscore four. 
actually I'll select it first, sorry. I'll now right click and now I'll use this command called paste geoset. So notice there the rails have returned, great. Now let's go ahead and drag this geometry into its new node. And we didn't use any node offset, so we can just simply drag it into the doors node there, like so. So now let's go and create a jog behavior for that joint we created in the servo controller. So in this command here, I'll use jog info. For degrees of freedom, we want to translate along the x-axis. We can leave the scale at 1, and the variable is going to be that door joint we created in the servo controller and close. But look what happens if we interact with the doors right now. I cannot move them. That's because we have not assigned that joint we created in the servo controller to the node itself. So in the component node tree, double left click the doors node to access its properties. And for joint, let's go and write our expression. So capital T for translate, lowercase x. So we're translating in the x-axis. And our variable is going to be door joint. So hit the enter key. It's blue, it's good, great. So now let's go ahead and close this out. So now when I interact with the doors, you can see they move all the way to the end, and then they move in this direction. But there is a problem. One side of the doors, the left side, moves correctly, but notice that the geometry over here is actually moving away from the machine. So we actually need to put this geometry in a different node and have it go in the negative x-axis direction. So let's go and do that now. I'll rename this node of doors, so I'll left click, pause, and left click again. And I'll type in door left. I'll then create a new node in the root node, so new link. Door right is what I'll name it. I'll close this out. I'll then go back to door left, to that geometry tab, and select the geometry container for the doors. I'll use the geometry sets filter. And it might be hard to see, but I'm just going to create a huge selection window because I know I'm only selecting, you know, the geometry that's contained in the door left node. So now I can go ahead and right click, geometry sets, and move it into a new feature. And now I'll just drag that geometry container into the new node of door right. Great. Now I don't really need to make this interactive. I can just simply open up the node's properties for door right. And for its joint property, I can say translate x, parentheses, and in this case, the negative door joint direction. So now I'll click, en I'll hit the enter key. It's blue, it's good, great. So now when I interact with the doors, you can notice on the right side, there is no jog behavior set up for that node, but on the left side, there still is. So now when I move the doors, notice they move inward. Great. Now the translation for the doors is not quite perfect. So what I'll do is I'll actually stop the doors here. I'll go to tools and click measure. And I'm going to do a point-to-point -point measurement, so I'll use the snap-on points. I'll do this corner point to this corner point. And it might be hard to see, so I'll go and rotate the view just a bit. It looks to be about 240 on the x-axis. So now I'll hit the escape key to exit out of the measure command. Go back to my door left, which is where the servo controller is. I'll access that joints. And for the door joint here, for its max value, go ahead and change this to 240. You could actually write the expression yourself in the notes properties, but this is a lot easier. So now we have a minimum of zero and a maximum value of 240 for the door joint. So I'll close this out. So now when I reset, notice that the save state for the joints is back here. I'll use the interact command. And now when I move the doors, notice they stop there perfectly. Now if you wanted to change the initial state for joints in a component, what you can do is move the joints to the position that you want them in. So in this case I'll close the doors and I'll actually move the panel over here. And now what I can do is start the simulation, stop it, so when I reset the simulation, you know, the joints stay there. Another way is to interact with the joints again. So I'll open the doors and move the panel over here. I'll now go to the simulation in the menu bar and click save state. So now when I run the simulation or reset it, notice that the joints are now at this initial state. I'm now going to show you how to make interactive geometry that you can move and rotate in the 3D world. For example, we have this workbench geometry here in the process machine. So I'll go back to the component root node, geometry tab, and I'll go and go to that original geometry container, and I'll go and use the geometry sets filter to select this geometry. So it's that white block, and 
these two black blocks here. So I'll move them into a new geometry container. So right click, geometry sets, move sets to feature. And now I want the bottom black bars to actually extrude up in the Z axis direction. So what I can do is I can create an operation feature of extrude. And I'm going to assign the geometry container or parent it to the extrude feature, like so. And notice that the length of the extrusion is being controlled by a value. So I can simply create a control parameter and then interact with that parameter to, you know, make it rise up and make the geometry rise down. So go and close this out. Go to the parameter tab, and I'll create a new real parameter. And I'll go and rename this to be rise joint. And I do want to rebuild the geometry because remember I'm making it longer or higher. And I'll also update the simulation. And for range, let's actually make the range to be uh, 300. So a minimum of 0 and a maximum value of 300. Close this out. I can now assign this control parameter to the extrusion. So I'll go back to the Geometry tab, double left click the Extrude feature. And for length, here what I'll type in is Rise Joint. I'll hit the Enter key. There's no errors. And notice that the extrusion is at its minimum value of 0. Great. I'll close this out. And now to make it interactive, I'll go to the Behavior tab, create a Jog Behavior. And the degrees of freedom, we want it to go in the Z direction, so translate Z. So degrees of freedom, translate Z. Scale of 1 is fine. And then that variable we're going to use is called Rise Joint. Close this out. And now let's test. So go to Interact Command. I hover over the geometry. That's a good sign. And now I'll move it up. Yep. And now we have a rising and falling platform. Great. Now one thing I forgot to show you was how to move interactive joints during a simulation. So I already have the doors controlled with a joint that I created in a servo controller. So in the components root node, I'm going to create a Python script behavior. And I do recommend you always have your Python script behaviors in your root node if you can, because it makes finding the scripts easier and also what you can do with your logic. So I'll go and create a Python script behavior here. And we'll do some coding. So when the simulation is running, I'll use the onRun event. I'll get a handle for the component, so comp equals get component. Get a handle for the servo controller, so I'll just call it servo. And I'm going to use a method, so comp.findBehavior. And this will search through all the child nodes in the node I'm calling the script in. So find behavior, and I left the servo controller with the default name of servo controller. And I'm now going to use a method called move, so servo.move. I'm going to make the joints be at zero value, just in case the doors are not open. I'll create a delay of two seconds, and then I'll use that same method of move to make them be at, I think the value I gave was 240 for the max. Now if you want more information about the events and methods I'm using, you can go to VC script, VC component, VC node, and specifically for the servo controller, you can go to VC servo controller. Right, so I'll compile the code. Move this out of the way. There's no errors, so I'll reset just in case and run the simulation. So after two seconds, yep, doors close, and everything works out great. So I'll reset. Now let's actually move or change the state of the doors. So I'll actually move them over here and run the simulation. Notice the doors automatically open. Then after two seconds, they close. Alright, this concludes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our community at community.visualcomponents.net. And as always, have a wonderful day.